welcome to Bang Goes the Theory. Now, you may remember back in April, the airspace of a Britain pretty much emptied out thanks to a massive cloud of ash that erupted from Eyjafjallajökull, Jökull, that infamous Icelandic volcano. Now, it had a massive impact on us back then, and there's no guaranteeing it won't affect us again. So I went to investigate the might of Mother Nature for myself. Just over there, in the distance, I can see the top of the volcano and this massive, thick, black plume of volcanic ash coming out the top of it. Even from this distance, it looks pretty awesome. At this time of the year, the two-hour drive from Reykjavik should take me through green pastures, but not this morning. The land has totally changed. We're not in Kansas anymore. The larger particles of ash fall closest to the volcano, turning the land grey. The lighter particles are caught by the airstream and head east towards Europe. I can't see more than 100 yards ahead of me. It's like some kind of Armageddon or something. Eventually, I can't resist venturing out into the desolate landscape. Unreal. It's seriously like being on another planet. And I can't imagine what all this ash is doing to the environment and to the farm animals and to the people who live here. It's this fine layer everywhere and underneath my feet, it feels like snow. It is incredibly gritty. It's, it's very harsh. Yeah, I'm getting out of here. Finally, we get upwind of the volcano and suddenly the land is green again. Look, 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 guys. Oh my gosh, look at that. There it is, the most notorious volcano of the decade in all its glory. Unbelievable. I don't know about you, but that looks pretty active to me. We're about eight kilometers from the volcano and the erupting rocks might look small, but the largest of them are actually the size of a car. The real danger here is when ice at the top of the volcano melts and the resulting meltwater makes contact with the magma, which shatters into fine ash that blasts over 10 kilometers up into the air. Oh my gosh, that's new, that's black and nasty. This is a powerful reminder that we know more about the surface of the moon than we do about the earth beneath our feet. Even the fact that the continents move has only been common knowledge for a little over a generation. But here's what we do know. Imagine if this plum is planet Earth. Now, if I cut it in half, what you basically have is a cross section of the inside of the Earth. Now, the outer layer is called the crust, which includes the continents and the ocean floors. For example, the continent of Europe might have a crust that's 50 kilometers thick, whereas the Atlantic Ocean around Iceland here might have a crust of only 10 kilometers thickness. Inside the crust, is the mantle. Now the mantle is super hot rock. It goes all the way down to 2,900 kilometers below the Earth's crust and is made up of about 40% silica, the same stuff that glass is made of. Now inside that again is the Earth's core, the very center of the Earth, going down to 6,370 kilometers below the Earth's surface. It's made up largely of iron and is even hotter than the mantle. It used to be thought that the mantle is molten rock, which rises to the surface and erupts from volcanoes in the form of magma. And when you look at the magma spewing from this volcano, that seems to make sense. But the mantle is in fact solid rock that only melts under very specific circumstances, especially below the edges of the tectonic plates that make up the Earth's outer layer. Iceland is slap bang on the middle of a constructive plate boundary. This is where the European tectonic plate meets the North American tectonic plate. These two plates are moving apart ever so slowly, a couple of centimeters every year, about the same speed as the growth of your fingernails. But why does the mantle melt when it's drawn upwards into the space created by the plates? 
basic science states that if you reduce the pressure of anything, its melting point will also be reduced, or its boiling point. It's the same idea. So I'm going to show you with this hot water. Right, the temperature of this water at the moment is... 85 degrees Celsius, okay? Now the boiling point of water is 100 degrees Celsius, so clearly that is not boiling at the moment. But if I reduce the pressure inside the flask, check that out. The pressure inside the flask has been reduced and the water is boiling at 85 degrees Celsius. The pressure inside there is lower, therefore its boiling point is lower as well. And that's pretty much what's happening with our volcano and the mantle beneath it. As the tectonic plates that split Iceland in half move apart, the mantle is slowly moving upwards. As it moves upwards, the pressure is decreasing. And as that pressure reduces, the melting point of the mantle reduces also, which means the mantle, the hot solid rock, begins to melt into molten magma. Every inch of Iceland has been formed by volcanic eruptions. The tectonic plates moving apart, the pressure dropping and the mantle melting, allowing magma to spew to the surface. But it's not only magma that makes some volcanoes so spectacular, gas can also play a part. If there are also gases dissolved in that magma, then as the magma rises, the pressure decrease is going to cause those gases to exsolve out of the magma, forming massive gas bubbles. And if the conditions are right, for example, if the magma is viscous enough, if it's nice and gloopy, then the pressure is going to build up in those bubbles until eventually it's going to explode the magma out of the volcano, a bit like a bottle of pop. I said that, Dad.